Well, it looks like we might be ready to start. Hello, I'm Scott Manley. You might know me. I talk about asteroids and spaceships on the internet. But I'm going to talk about this video that I originally created about five years ago. And what we're essentially looking at is the solar system here. Look, you get the sun in the middle and four planets. And somewhere around, somewhere or another, another planet, Jupiter, comes. And if you look very carefully, you might see these little flashes of white light. right? And they're following this one around because this one is Earth. Now, these white flashes of light, these represent asteroids which were being discovered. Now, the date is 1973. This is just after I was born. And uh, the process of discovering asteroids is worth talking about, because you know asteroids are essentially small bodies in space. If you take a camera and point it at the sky for long enough, you'll get you know, light from stars. And if you open the shutter longer, you'll get fainter and fainter stars. You'll get some asteroids in there. Now, just because you've taken a single picture of something containing asteroids doesn't mean you've discovered an asteroid. That just means you've photographed an asteroid. So the discovery process is more complicated. Each of these is someone has taken a photo, and then they've taken a second photo, and they've noticed that one of the stars has moved. Now, you know, from a long way away, things may not seem to move unless you uh, take a photograph a long time apart. You know, if I, I look at the back, I can't tell if this guy in the back row is a person or if he's a cardboard cutout. But if I wait long enough, they'll move. So that's what asteroids are like. You've got to wait long enough. And to actually figure out if you really have an asteroid, you've got to watch it for a long enough time that you can exactly plot its orbit forward. And eventually, after about four years, or four oppositions, the minor planet center will say, hey, you really have discovered an asteroid. And you can get a given a number, and you get given a number, or you get given a name. So this process, you see, has gone on to 1979. Now this is, watch here. You get a, a little pulse there as the Earth flew past. Back then, all these things were being photographed on old-style photographic plates. And for people to actually create a discovery, see that big pulse there? That was because a lot of people were photographing Jupiter because Voyager had just flown past Jupiter, and they were wanting to find out where all these new moons were. And they were looking for little dots moving, and they thought, wait, that's not one of our moons. That's one of these asteroids. Oh, great, we discovered a bunch of asteroids. So this pattern continues through the 80s. We're still using photographic plates. And uh, it takes a long time. You get the plate, you develop it. It maybe goes back to an observatory, and months later, somebody actually looks at it. By that point, the asteroid may be lost. So. The, not everyone would actually find the asteroid. In fact, many astronomers would find these trails on their plates and be like, get that out of here. That's bad data. So that, that's what's going on here, that we're photographing these things, but we're not actually converting them into discoveries over time. <laughs> now, I want to also show you another thing here. You'll notice that most of the discoveries are actually happening. Again, this is the planet Earth. Most of the discoveries happen pointed away from the sun. And the simple reason for this is you're looking for asteroids in the night sky. You can't point your telescope at the sun. You have to point it as far away from the sun as possible so you get good data. And uh, yeah, we're getting up into 1980s here. We're still not having a huge number. Oh, I haven't explained this number, by the way. See this 13,000? That was the number of asteroids we knew about back then, right? Um, <laughs> you know, 13,000 sounds like a, a lot, but. Truthfully, it's nothing compared to what we found in recent months. So um, we're up to the end of the 80s. And by this point, astronomy is starting to begin this transition from photographic plates to digital imagery, you know, charge couple devices and things like that. So that, that lets you see deeper, but it also lets you develop your photos much faster. You don't have to take them off to a lab and things like that. So, the discovery rate does start to pick up a little because the, there's a faster response time associated with these things. So yeah, now you see it's really starting to go. You, and you're starting, if you're looking carefully, you might see a bit of a pulse starting to happen. And that pulse will remain. So this pulse is because when you're trying to discover asteroids, you're looking in dark skies. The darker the skies, the deeper you can go, the fainter the objects you can see. Well, it turns out that once a month, there's this thing called the full moon, which makes your skies a little bright, and you can't see the dark asteroids. So 
This pulsing, which comes and goes as the discovery rate goes up, it happens every month. Every full moon, the discovery rate is low. Every new moon, the discovery rate is high. So 1995, we're really getting into the middle of the 1990s. Electronic discovery processors are starting to come online. The processing chain, as we say, gets much, much shorter. Computers get more powerful. And towards the late 90s, people really started to realize, oh, wait, we've got like 30,000 asteroids here. Maybe we should start being worried about this stuff. So uh, there was a group created something called LINEAR, which is, uh, oh, I, I can't remember exactly, but it's an acronym for the Near Earth Asteroid uh, Reconnaissance Telescope. It was an automated telescope in the White Sands Missile Range, which would photograph the night sky and instantly take those images and send them off to computers, which would be designed to look for these objects. And look, the discovery rate has just took off. Not only do we have digital imagery going on, we have a digital processing of the stuff in real time because not only do you have to take the photo, you have to immediately process it, you have to then pass it off to somebody, tell the world, go quick, look, find these things. And so this just really takes off. We have a second one that comes online called the Catalina Sky Survey, which does things even better. You might be starting to see this green ring. So the green ring, actually, all those flashes, they turn into little green dots <laughs> because the, they're little, uh, I wanted to have green dots for the main belt. And uh, it doesn't work, unfortunately, in this screen. But there's a whole bunch of red dots in here for the ones that could hit the Earth. It doesn't really work in this light, unfortunately, but this is way more impressive. So this is all compiled with public data. This is from the uh, Lowell Observatory. They publish a list of every single object, quarter of a million objects by 2004, right? So there's some other patterns you might want to see. Down at the bottom, you frequently see holes in this. And I've actually I've had two different explanations for this. Uh, one person says this is because in Arizona during these months, it tends to be very cloudy. And basically, the discovery telescopes are largely there. So that's one explanation. The other explanation is it also lines up with the plane of the galaxy, which makes it hard to find small objects in the sky. I, I haven't been able to verify that one way or another. But now we're up to like almost 400,000. You know, it, this, things are getting crazy. Now, uh, we. Another group, I just, if you, oh, you can't really see it. I was hoping to show you these ones here. There's another group that's out here called the Trojans, but never mind. Discovery rate's starting to go crazy. Now, around about this time, another mission goes up called uh, WISE. That's the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer. It was supposed to look at infrared emissions all over the entire night sky. It wasn't designed to look for asteroids, but well, it just happened to find them. What it does is it creates these arcs looking forwards and back in the orbit. See, the discovery pattern is completely different. This thing found, found hundreds of thousands of these things. Unfortunately, the camera was an infrared camera, and the coolant basically only lasted just over a year. Now, they brought it back online without the coolant, but uh, you know it's not as good anymore. Now, that's a really interesting pattern because it's actually similar in design to the Sentinel telescope, which, uh, I, I, as I understand it, similar in design to the Sentinel telescope that B612 is wanting to launch. So yeah, uh, could you imagine that but sitting in at Venus? That would not only let you see objects out in the main belt, but it would also let you see things interior. And this is the one thing to bring away. All these discoveries are happening outside of the Earth's orbit. Whereas interior to the Earth's orbit, we're not discovering anything. So asteroids could be coming right out of the sun and we would not see them until they flew past us, hopefully flew past us. I mean, let's you know, hope that they fly past. And so we're up to present day, 685,731 asteroids in general. That is quite a number and we are continuing to discover them at quite a rate. So thanks, I'm Scott Manley. <laughs> Yeah. Anyone got any questions? Oh. Do you want to do a question? That's when we have them come up. Let's go. Why are there asteroids? Well, it's because the one I'll see clean, I see Jupiter, it's right over there, and Mars. Yeah. Between Jupiter and Mars, it's the asteroid belt. Yes, exactly. Jupiter is the only other planet sitting on there. What do you want to ask? Um, so I noticed that we, so I noticed that, um, 
right now we've seen the asteroid drive around. We were also, I noticed a few asteroids, when Venus went between Earth and the Sun, I yep. noticed a few red dots appeared between it. Is that because Venus kind of blocked the Sun a little and helped us look around? No, it, most of these ones are actually discovered outside of Earth's orbit, but they're on the elliptical orbit, so they might be discovered out here and then fall in and then come back out. But we can only discover them when they're out here. So we can discover stuff interior to the Earth, but only when they happen to be exterior to the Earth. What percentage of the 685,000 do you have an orbit calculated? Oh, every single one of these has an orbit calculated. You cannot add it to this list unless you have a really good orbit. OK, I think that's the end of that. Well, thank you very much, Scott. And